So one of the great things in the past 10 years or so, everybody has a LCD or LED TV now. Uh, and not only are these TVs better, high resolution, lighter, cooler, put them, put them on the wall. They're also a lot more serviceable uh, by do-it-yourself type standards. You know, before you had the tube TVs, the CRT TVs, you, you don't want to mess with those. But these TVs, they have basically circuit boards that you can kind of swap out if something goes bad. And this TV here, I had purchased it on uh, Craigslist for 50 bucks. The guy was like, it won't, it just won't turn on. No, no lights, nothing. And if that's ever the case with your TV, it won't do anything. You get no light or anything on the front of it. No power light. You hit a button, it does nothing. 99% of the time, it's going to be the power supply board. And it's actually a lot simpler than you think to just kind of swap it out yourself. And I'm going to show you how to do that here. So as you can see there, I'm taking the back off this TV. Uh, they're all pretty much similar to this. you got a back panel, a big piece of plastic. It's held in with screws. Remove all the screws you can and kind of just pull it off. And the very first thing you want to check if you got a no power situation is the fuse on the, on the old uh, power supply board there. And I believe I, this has been such a long time ago I filmed this video. I'm just now getting around to editing it. But I forget. I think the fuse was blown. But there was something bad on the board that I did replace the fuse. And it just kept blowing the fuse again. So basically a component on the power supply board was bad. And I just ordered a whole new power supply board for like 25 or 30 bucks on eBay. So you just saw me disconnect one of the connectors on this power supply board. There's only two connectors to actually get off. Uh, the other one I had a kind of a hard time with. I just went ahead and undid the screws first off of this board. And then I managed to get the other connector off. So this is a good time to give you a general precaution of working with electronics. There is something to fear. It's, it's going to be the capacitors on any power supply board. Uh, any large capacitors, the round uh, cylindrical tubes, the black ones, any large ones of those. You don't want to touch any of the leads off of those. Like if this board's upside down, uh, wherever it's soldered to don't want to touch that just try not to touch any any of uh any of the connections or anything on the board because capacitors do store energy and it can deliver quite a shock you know sometimes it's just high voltage it's give you a big zap uh but it also sometimes can be enough to uh, stop your heart so be careful here's a shot of the old board and the new board So yes, you guessed it. It's just going to be as easy as putting this new board in, screwing it down, and putting the connections back onto it. Those two connectors there. Uh, and I assume most TVs like this are going to be similar. You're just going to have a power supply board and some connectors, and it's going to be this easy. I'm so glad to have TVs that are serviceable these days. How great is that? Uh, and I could have diagnosed what was wrong on the board. I believe it was like a transistor or something. Now, there was some reason in particular I didn't try to fix it. I couldn't find the value of what it was, I don't think, of what what was on the board was bad. Because you could tell because it was a burnt, it was actually burnt, but I don't think I could tell what value it was. So I just went ahead and bought a whole new board. Uh, now if it was something like a capacitor or, re or a resistor or something where you could tell what value it was and it was burnt, that stuff's not too hard to change out either. I would definitely adventure on to do that. And this fix did work like a charm. The TV powered right up and I still use it to this day. Literally, I probably filmed this three years ago. So, <laughs> it's it works.